When I played Wolfenstein or Wolf 3D as I also call it, I was around 10 years old. Yes, I don't think our parents cared too much about age restrictions back then, and then again graphics in the 90s weren't quite as realistic as they are today. Wolf 3D, what a game. This was the first first person shooter game I've ever played, and at the time I didn't realize what the game was about or what the strange artwork against the corridor walls actually represented. It's only now that we look back on these games and where they come from that we realize more about their story and history, and what a history it is. It all started with a man named Silas Warner, Muse Software's first employee, who got inspired after seeing an arcade video game called Berserk, then a few weeks later watching a film adaptation of The Guns of Navarone, a story based on the Battle of Leros during World War II. This inspired Warner to create the top-down, stealth-based, action-adventure shooting game set in World War II, called Castle Wolfenstein, which was released in 1981. In this game you play as an allied spy who has been captured and taken to Castle Wolfenstein to be interrogated, after which you get thrown into a dungeon. You then get handed a loaded pistol from a dying prisoner and have to escape the dungeon, get your hands on the battle plans and escape from the castle killing and looting Nazi soldiers in the process. Castle Wolfenstein got some mixed responses and in 1984 Muse released a sequel, Beyond Castle Wolfenstein, with the objective to assassinate Adolf Hitler. Beyond Castle Wolfenstein was similar to the first installment in both gameplay and appearance. In 1985 Muse filed for bankruptcy, Warner left to join Microprose and Muse was legally disestablished in 1987. This looked like the end for Wolfenstein. In Louisiana, late in 1990, a group of programmers who were working for Softdisk at the time, John Romero, John Carmack, designer Tom Hall, artist Adrian Carmack and manager Jay Wilbur, were planning to quit Softdisk and start their own company. They called themselves Ideas from the Deep. In 1991, they formally established ID or ID software and started experimenting with 3D computer graphics and limiting the surfaces computers needed to display due to the limitations of personal computers of the time. John Carmack achieved this by using ray casting, which meant only surfaces that were visible to the player needed to be calculated instead of the entire surrounding area. After six weeks of development, John Carmack had created a rudimentary 3D game engine, which id Software used for other games, including Hover Tank 3D, which had flat walls and simple lighting. Carmack then implemented a feature used by Ultima Underworld to display texture mapped 3D graphics and in November 1991 released Catacomb 3D. This prompted Apogee to push the team to make a 3D shareware action game. Tom Hall initially suggested a sci-fi project but John Romero's idea proved more interesting, a 3D remake of the 1981 Castle Wolfenstein. John Carmack, Tom Hall and John Romero all remembered playing the game and believed the maze-like shooter gameplay was a good fit for the 3D game engine and at its core a fast and simple action game where you can shoot soldiers and loot their bodies. The team had some initial concerns about using the name Wolfenstein due to trademark issues. They contacted Silas Warner and learned that Muse no longer existed and that the trademark had lapsed. The game concept got immediate approval from Apogee Scott Miller and he guaranteed a hundred thousand US dollars on the project. So far so good. They then started on the game. Ramira and Hall designed the aesthetics and gameplay while John Carmack programmed the game's engine and added features from Catacomb 3D including decorative objects. The team ensured a violent and exciting atmosphere with realistic sound effects and the development team along with Apogee Scott Miller did the voicing for the enemies. When the game was almost complete, the software distributor FormGem raised concerns about the game's violence and shock content and in response to this it increased these aspects by adding corpses, bloody wall details and skeletons along with screams and cries and a death cam where you can replay the death of the episode's final boss. Meanwhile, on a lighter note, Carmack also added walls that when triggered moved to reveal secret rooms or passages which contain treasure, supplies or weapons. On May 5th, 1992, the team completed the first episode of the Shareware game and the other episodes a few weeks later. It was called Wolfenstein 3D. 
and you play the role of an Allied spy, William B.J. Blazkowicz, during World War II, who has to escape from the Nazi German prison Castle Wolfenstein and carry out crucial missions against the Nazis. You progress through the game's levels by finding an elevator to take you to the next level or kill the final boss while fighting Nazi soldiers and German Shepherd dogs along the way by using various guns or a knife. Ed hoped the game would make around $60,000 during its first month, but instead the first royalty check they received from Apogee was for $100,000 and the game was top shareware seller of 1992 and won the Best Arcade Game Award from Compute. Wolfenstein 3D and its sequel, Sphere of Destiny, were both very successful games, despite being banned in Germany due to the inclusion of Nazi symbols. Although it went on to other projects such as Doom and Quake, multiple subsequent Wolfenstein titles have been produced by other companies, the latest of course being 2019's Wolfenstein Youngblood and Wolfenstein Cyberpilot. Wolfenstein 3D is referred to as the grandfather of 3D shooters. Its fast-paced action and technical prowess set the standard for shooter games, especially first-person shooters. This Retro Rewind is us paying homage to this legendary game and its epic history, Wolf 3D.